This is Eugene, and I'm pissed off. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today, I wanted to do something different. You know me as the Dynamics guy, the guy who works with the ERP system in here. And this system, I, I'm working with this for about 18 years now, and it's full of modules, like things like accounting, accounts payable, receivable, and production, and planning. And this is an ERP suite. Guess who is doing an ERP suite now? Palantir is supposedly doing an ERP suite. So I naturally was excited to find out that maybe we'll have a competition. I, I, I'm interested in a Go language. I'm going to go check it out. Maybe somebody will finally write something in a concurrent language. So I decided to explore. And what I found out is that this is in marketing inaccuracy. The, what they call an ERP suite is not a classic understanding for a guy like me, an ERP suite of software. What they mean is that they have a great orchestration engine. And kind of a good source is the official documentation that they file with uh, SEC, with Security and Exchange Commission. And in this, they state that they orchestrate and they don't replace ERPs and they don't build ERP software. They connect to somebody else's ERP software and they analyze the data and they do a terrific job at analyzing the data. So I went through the demo day that they have and the genesis of the software and the capabilities that they bring to bear and these look really solid. So in here, at the bottom, we have data assets, systems like the system I'm working with, or it could be an SAP, or they partner with IBM so that they can have uh, the data from the IBM systems. Then they do all of these ontologies. They understand what the factory is, what the bill of material is, what are the materials, orders, payments, and all that. This is great. In, our, in my system, we already have this. We don't need to understand it because we already know it. But if you're connecting to one ERP here, another one here, and there, you need a common understanding of the data. Common data service, anyone? So then you do dynamic decisions. So if this happens, then that happens and all of that. And there you surface this higher and you analyze the data based on machine learning and AI and you guide an operator to arm them with information to make the best decisions. So in, in the examples that they had in the demo day, they said, hey, something is expiring, some raw material is expiring, maybe I should sell the raw material or maybe I should manufacture something and here's my capacity for the factory, maybe I'll manufacture this and sell it to that and is it a good plan? And in a scenario like this, uh, what looked really, really good to me at the demo day was the what if scenario. So their strength is in the military operations. So they are to produce the options and the sequence of events and enterprises are also sometimes as complex as a battle theater. So you actually need the sequence of events and what if scenarios and all that. It's probably not that fast of criticality most of the time. Sometimes it is, um, but you typically have more time. So in there, I saw an awesome simulation engine that gives suggestions like this to the operator and they use machine learning and AI and they go back to what ifs and they give a suggestion to someone. There were some uh, commenters or guys on YouTube who said, yep, and then you could do the smart contracts on the blockchain and those are going to be automated actions, which if you trust the system, automated actions are great to go. I had a discussion with one of the guys in there saying, hey, OCR, why don't Palantir ingest all of this and give me the OCR so that the account payable clerk doesn't have to look at it. Great scenario, great scenario. If you have high level of accuracy and everything matches and there are no exceptions, fantastic. So, um, so my main point here is guys, don't, 
be accurate, seek the, uh, the opinion of the guys who are actually know what they're talking about. Don't misinterpret what's written in saying, hey, I, I'm just going to do like a rudimentary analysis of what the ERP system is, slap it on the video and say, hey, ERP systems means they have finance and HR and accounts payable and planning and manufacturing. They don't yet. Um, they haven't even started or declared that they want to go that way. They have an awesome orchestration engine in here. And basically, when I took a look at their um, demo, it's it. it I, I do demos for a living, right? I, I share with my, my prospects and customers of what ERP system can do. And it, it was just just cute it, it's not um it's not a good erp demo meaning that it, it has nothing to do with ERP. they have great um capabilities for basically resell uh orchestrating and deploying it on aws and by the way you could have sap on aws so you if you're already on that aws you already will have good security there. You'll have good connections there. So it makes sense if your ERP system with the data source is already on that AWS, you just connect to it. And it, it's actually a rapid deployment. You, They have it connected to SAP. They analyze the data. They know the ontologies and the data structures. They can give you the pre-built insights that they have, and they're working on building more insights. That's great but they don't have the ERP system. So just commenters out there, be accurate. So if you like this kind of content, let me know and subscribe. If there are enough content in there, I will do a deeper dive sharing what I know, how I see it, so that we arrive to a more accurate understanding. And it's by no means, I'm, I'm not dissing Palantir, it's just in inaccuracy and what they mean by ERP suite is an awesome orchestration engine and simulation engine and plus an automated way to deploy this whole connect solution to ingest data from somebody else's ERPs. So thank you for your attention and hit that like button if you liked it.